keep staring at each other, or are you going to invite me in? It's just that I wasn't expecting anybody. If you don't mind my asking, what can I do for you? You need money. I need your investigative skills. I mean, I no longer do detective work. But do come in if you want to. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Blake. Sophia Blake. Mr. McPherson, I need you to investigate a case that is dear to my heart. Just name your price. I haven't investigated in a long time, miss. I really need your investigative skills. I will pay all your expenses. an interesting offer. What exactly was it? Mr. McPherson, you've been in Paris for some time and I need your help. Only you can investigate this case. I'm ready to pay anything. Could you give me any more details about the case? At the moment, it all seems rather nebulous. You probably haven't heard about the Orfei case, Mr. McPherson. The newspapers have kept it quiet. A couple of American tourists were brutally murdered. They were my sister and her husband. I want to know the circumstances surrounding their death. How did they die? Are you sure they were murdered? It may just have been a terrible accident. The Whites were found decapitated in their hotel room, Mr. McPherson. Your sister and her husband, they were both American. What exactly were they doing in Paris? I was supposed to meet them in Paris. You know, Mr. McPherson, visiting Europe was my sister Ruby's childhood dream. With Mr. White, her wish came true. They were so very much in love. Are the police handling the case? If they are, it may well complicate things. Do you know the name of the inspector in charge of the investigation? The detective in charge of the investigation is named Le Brun. You know, the police are the same in every country, Mr. McPherson. Whether you're in New York or in Paris, you mustn't be in a hurry. Le Brun is no exception. These murders were committed in Paris. Do you know whereabouts in Paris? A hotel in a chic part of Paris in the 8th district. The Hotel Orphée. They arrived there about a week ago. They were found dead in their hotel bedroom. I 
don't get it. I've never worked for you before, not here nor in New York, yet you come to me and ask me to find your sister's murderer. Why me, Miss Blake? Your reputation, Mr. McPherson. I find your nickname, Spooky, to be charming. I have friends who know people at the Pinkerton Agency in New York. The suspicion surrounding you is totally unfounded, naturally. You are the man I need for this investigation. Discreet, capable of seeing beyond appearances. I don't want to seem overly interested, but why don't we settle my fees before we go any further? This case may take you several days. I'll give you 500 straight away and 500 per day of successful investigation. Your offer is very reasonable. I accept. I owe you a lot, Mr. McPherson. Much more than the money I'm paying you. To be honest, I'm not sure I should take the case. Firstly, because where there's a murder, there's a murderer. Inspector Lebrun is in a better position to arrest murderers than I am. Mr. McPherson, I have no faith in the police. The 8th District Police Station, Lebrun especially, is trying to hush up the affair. All they care about is keeping their reputation as a chic area. You'd like me to begin right away. I think I have all the information I need to begin. You're sure you haven't forgotten anything? The police didn't find any items of value in the room. Yet my sister and her husband traveled very comfortably. In luxury and with old family heirlooms. It was a passion they both shared. It is risky traveling with large sums of money. It would be a shame if they'd been killed for that reason. How valuable were these family heirlooms? An old relic of no value. My sister was very fond of it. Of no value whatsoever. I hope to have results quickly. I'll be in touch with you when I've made some progress in my investigation. Goodbye, Miss Blake. I ask only one thing of you. Be discreet. The police must not suspect you were involved. If you'd like to meet me. Gee, these suitcases are heavy. And do not forget, young man, the elevator is still out of order. Oh, brother!
Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orphe. My name is Isidore Petit. What can I do for you? Good evening. My name is Gus McPherson. I'm a journalist for the Clarence de Paris. Could I ask you a few questions concerning the death of two American tourists? Name of White. That's it. White with a Y, not an I. Sir, you work for a vulgar little rag. Your newspaper is a, a hodgepodge of lies and innuendos. I'm sorry. I'm not employed directly by the Clarion. I'm a freelance reporter. Those newspapers could not care less about the damage they cause. Such words tarnish the reputation of our establishment. Who will want to rent that room now? Was it true what they say about the whites? Were they really just American tourists here on a visit? That is right, except that the whites did not behave as tourists. They arrived on the 8th and, uh, if you will pardon the expression, left feet first on the 12th. In the intervening period, only Mr. White ventured out, and ventured out is something of an overstatement. Mrs. White did not leave the room for the whole stay. Were the Whites always alone in their room? The Whites received no visitors during their stay here. They were adamant that they should not be disturbed, which is why I refused to give their number to a man who asked to see them the night before their murder. A man came to see the Whites on the night they died. Did he introduce himself? Do you know his name? Some cunning devil that was asking too many questions. Rather like you, actually. With the description you've given me, I'll be able to draw myself. I'm something of a painter, too. You are looking for a description with which you are going to produce a sketch, is that it? Well, I cannot wait to see this. The man was French, Parisian, in fact. No spectacles, no. Small, dark, rather wide eyes beneath large, thick eyebrows. Wide mouth, thin lips, a boxer's nose, solid build, a strapping lad. Typical working class type. If you want any more information, contact the police directly. I'm afraid that I can do no more for you. What can I get you, sir? I would like to inquire about a couple of friends. May I help you? What's the name? White. Oh, the Whites. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but the Whites are dead. They were found murdered in their room. An awful story. I know that they were killed. If you already knew, what else do you want? Clues. I don't know anything, sir. You should try the police. Maybe you would have more luck with them. police. Uh, that's right, exactly. The police. I'm helping their inquiries along by keeping one step ahead. Sir, I'm sure you realize that a waiter is witness to all manners of things in the course of an evening. Fortunately, not all of them are linked to murder. Did you have any unusual customers that evening? 
You must be joking, my friend. Strange customers are all in the day's work for a waiter. That evening was no exception. Like the man who spent the evening alone at a table over there, besides the window. He left empty-handed. Been stood up, I imagine. Can you tell me any more? You know I would like to help you, but I think you had better deal directly with the police. A man named Lebrun is leading the inquiry. Thank you. You're welcome. Sir? Give me a bottle of red. Are you quite sure, Mr. Beauvais, that you have not seen him? Yes, yes, I'm sure. Go on, Mrs. Elwa, go home. We will take care of this, I promise. Oh, thank you, Mr. Beauvais, you're so kind. The next time I'm at Cezanne, I'll bring you back a nice bottle of red wine. That's a promise. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. Little bottle of red. Come on, next. Can I help you? You're a policeman. Um, my name is Gus McPherson. I'm an American journalist. I would like to ask you a couple of questions about the Orfe case. I do not deal with you journalist types. I understand. It's always intimidating to come up against a journalist. In any case, I'm not supposed to speak to the police either. Shall we make a little exception? Does your rag have a name? You know, it's a newspaper in New York, the News, the New York News. I have a brother-in-law who works at the News. Do you know him? Jules Cancampois. I don't know who you're talking about. Are you sure he works at the News? There are dozens of daily newspapers in New York, you know. Maybe it's the Post News or the Early News. Heck, I can hardly tell them apart myself. Forget it. Mm. It is baking in here, isn't it? You would not happen to have anything to drink, would you? Just one for the road. of promises and empty-handed, huh? I do happen to have a little something for you. An amazing bottle of red wine. You cannot say no to that, officer. Don't you feel a little thirsty? Good 
Great. Here is the pen pusher giving it another go. Goodbye. Yeah, right. Goodbye. Great. Here is the pen pusher giving it another go. When I read the file, I noticed the name of a certain doctor, Frank Kaufner. What can you tell me about him? Dr. Kuffner is our expert. Forensic scientist and above all, psychiatrist. The sort of guy who prefers the company of madmen and corpses to the likes of you and me. don't seem to be overly fond of Dr. Kaufner. Is there any particular reason for that? The chief of police himself imposed Dr. Kaufner on us. It's not going to help matters any. I've read the police report, but I'm sure you can tell me a little more. What are your impressions on the White case? This case is pretty messy. A foul murder, unclear motive. If Inspector Lebrun needs a hand, he will ask me. For the time being, he is managing on his own like a big boy. That is all I know. Of course, if Inspector Lebrun is surrounded by guardian angels like you, he can't be making much headway with his investigations. If he's not making headway in his investigation, it's his own fault. Lebrun is bending over backwards trying to find the mysterious visitor the Whites had that evening just before the murder. He's not even cross-checking the statements. Goodbye. Yeah, right. Goodbye. Kaufner's office, please. It's over there, right at the end of the hall. Make sure you don't get lost. Come in. Dr. Frank Kaufner? Uh, what can I do for you, sir? I'm Gustav McPherson. I've come here to ask you a few questions about the White case.
tell me what you want to hear. So, you are investigating the incident at the Hotel Horte. Yes, Doctor. Your professional opinion on the murders. Did Inspector Lebrun send you, Mr. McPherson? Yes, more or less. I'm here on behalf of Inspector Lebrun. You are investigating out of personal interest. What, Mr. McPherson, is your interest in this case? A friend of the family was worried, and I'm trying to clarify the situation. A friend? Are you quite sure? The Whites had no friends in Paris. At least, not as far as I know. Appearances can sometimes be deceptive, Dr. Kaufner. That's why I would like to clarify this situation by gathering as much information as possible. I am at your disposal, Mr. McPherson. How can I help you? What can you tell me about the scene of the crime? The police have released very few details. The man who committed this murder, and I stress the fact that he is a man, is probably quite overwhelmed at the present time. This crime was committed under the influence of a sudden impulse, without premeditation. His act is now haunting him. He is not himself. And you think the motive for the murder was theft? That is what the police say. But does the official version reflect Inspector Lebrun's true opinion? This murder could be the first in a long series of crimes. What could be the motive of such a crime? Love, hate, revenge. Those are the three reasons behind so much human bloodshed, Mr. McPherson. It's awful. You are discovering the dark side of Paris, Mr. McPherson. And do you have a suspect, Mr. McPherson? If I had a suspect, I would not be here, Dr. Kaufner. It has been a most pleasant conversation, but unfortunately, I cannot afford you more time, Mr. McPherson. I hope I have satisfied your curiosity. again. Sir, I have nothing more to say to you. Sir? The police have a suspect. I saw the inspector's report. What do you know about the man who spent the entire evening by the window? That is certainly true. He was here on the night of the murder. Until what time did the man stay? Now let's see if I can remember. He arrived at around 8 p.m., took a seat by the window, and dashed off just before the storm broke at around 11 p.m. and he stayed there alone for the whole evening. Now let me think. I saw him chatting for a while with Malay. Who is this Malay? Théo Malay. Works at the Orphée. He's a lout. Why is he a lowlife? He likes to bet. And when you do, you have to pay your gambling debts. 
It's a vicious circle. Malay is a bona fide con man. Did you notice whether Malay gave any money to this man? Uh, no, no, no. It's the man who gave the money to Malay. I remember. It was cash. And do you know where I might find this Malay? Malay hangs out at the Alambique, a bistro in the 14th district. That is where he gambles away his wages. Thank you. You're welcome. Sir? Can you identify this man? Yes, maybe. Yes, that's him. Did you see this man with the whites? I have never seen the whites, under any circumstances. There's no way I would have noticed them with that man. So these two men may have no connection to the White's murder. Sorry, but this is your investigation, not mine. I can only tell you the facts, nothing more. Could you give me a description of this mysterious character? You could draw him? That's really neat. I'll give you a description right now. He was tall, very tall, heavy. Black moustache, square-faced, and dreadful eyes. Threatening, even. A tough guy. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, it is you again. Thanks to you, I've been able to draw up a portrait of a potential suspect. It's not perfect, but... But I think that with this, we are on to something. Now all we have to do is show it to the police. That crafty devil with the mustache! Then he is the culprit! Just one minute, Mr. Petit. I never said this man was guilty. I don't even know his name. With those killer's eyes, there can be no mistake. Good. Well, if it's all right with you, I have a lot of work to do. Goodbye, sir. That's a rather large suitcase. Big enough to slip into. I'm sure the front desk clerk will not like to see me going upstairs alone. I must find a ruse or persuade him to come up with me. And me who found the studio tiny. Hope 
Anything that is break did not. Here we go again. And make sure you do not drop it, young man. Don't worry about it, Mr. Petit. Oh. This is really heavy. Talk about starting a new job on the wrong foot. Ow. Ow. Just one more step. Ooh. And there we go. Whew. It's a good thing I didn't have the Atlantic to cross. Of course the door is locked, and the front desk clerk is hardly likely to open it for me. I must find a way to get in. That's no, not the room I'm interested in. Anyway, the door is locked. Loiseau? Ah, oh, it's the detective. Welcome to my home, Inquisitor. You are the detective, are you not? Who told you I was a detective, madam? I am a seer. I simply see things others do not. A clairvoyant? Really? What luck. So am I. I can feel the suffering radiating from you. I suppose that on the night of the murder, you also felt vibrations. Evil, young man. It was here, close to me. Very close. Have you been the victim of visions, madam? Rather like me? Visions of murder? The White's murder. Young man. Your instinct spoke to you. You are an artist, are you not? I'm also an artist. Perhaps you'd like to buy one of my paintings. Take this. They say Napoleon brought it back from his Egyptian campaign. It represents thought. The Egyptian god of arcane knowledge. The Ibis of the Nile. It will help you on your quest. I shall be there to help you find the right path. Do you believe that evil was in the White's room? Just like you and I are in here? The Whites brought evil with them. Evil lurked inside them and devoured them from the inside out. Until they were one with it. I will remember what you said. Who knows? One day I may even need your clairvoyance. And should you have need of guidance, do not hesitate. Come back and see me.
Ah, it is you again. How is Mrs. Loiseau involved in this case? I really don't understand. Is she a witness? Is she a suspect? Can she be trusted? Madame Loiseau may be a little eccentric, but she is our best client. She has been living in the Hotel Orphée for many years now. Mrs. Loiseau would not be a bit, uh, how shall I put it, nutty? Not many people would dare claim that they can sense evil. In any case, I certainly would not. Nonsense and superstition. Any evil presence here is definitely human. People can be gruesome. Good. Well, if it's all right with you, I have a lot of work to do. Goodbye, sir. Cutie, we've not seen you in ages. Berenice, what a surprise. Look, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you know a certain Teo Malé? Uh, no, but surely the owner does. You're lucky he's in right now. Your no one knows everyone you know. You're as charming as ever. Thank you, Berenice. Ah, uh, call me baby like everybody else. Right, I've got to run too, cutie. You know, work. See you soon, okay? Yes, uh, anyway, you know my address. Come up and see me sometime. Ciao. Ciao! Come on, let's see that hot hand of yours. Queen and her three sisters. Oh no, are you doing it on purpose or what? Three of a kind. You beat my three aces. Right, I've had it. I'm off. Ah, Hulot, you're not going now, are you? Not when I was about to relieve you of your car. Don't start, Malay. Do not think that you can get away with things just because you have settled your bar tab. Why it is McPherson? Hey, McPherson, come over here! McPherson? Who is that? Another American in Paris, who is broke. Let me introduce you. McPherson, let me introduce Théo Mallet. Hi. Right, I will leave you two. I have work to do. Hi. I get the feeling I've seen you before somewhere. Have you ever been to New York? Oh, no, Mac. I'm so absent-minded sometimes. The jacket. The Orfe. Your doorman at the Orfe. If you are interested in the suit, I will give you a good deal. As far as I'm concerned, it is ancient history. You didn't like your job anymore. Yet the Orfe is a prestigious hotel. You are very nosy. Do you want my old job or something? Maybe the hotel did not pay you enough. Or maybe you found other sources of income. I'm the sole heir of some old fart or other. I'm taking the first train back to Brittany. You must admit, it's most uncommon to come into an inheritance right in the middle of Benanta's cafe on the night of a murder. I don't see what I could tell you. I have something to show you. Do you recognize this man? 